Hi, I'm Debbie Cronister. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I'm glad you're joining me today. You can find me at stampwithdeb.com and I am here on, I'm on Facebook Live every Tuesday at three o'clock and Pacific time. And um, I'm so happy you're here with me today. Let's get started. I have a really fun project for you today. This card is called a floating tiered gatefold card. And as you can see, it is a gatefold card with a belly band. So I want to take my belly band off. And I'll tell you now, one of my panels is not right. And it's this one right here. I put this front panel on wrong. So my card does not open the right way. So if you can see it, these all stretch out like so. But this one, the panel does not open that way. So I'm going to show you how not to make this mistake and show you how I made this really cute card. So let me just go ahead and get started. For this one, I use the free celebration paper, the rainbows um, paper, and you can get that with a $50 order through the end of February. So that's coming up really quick where it's going to be ending. So for the other one, I'm going to use another free celebration paper, and that's the daffodil. So let me just pull all my parts in here, and let's move that one out. So this is, and I saw this, this online, and it um, was five by done in a five by seven, and I wanted it to fit in an A2 size envelope. So I modified it so that it will now fit in a regular envelope. You will have to pay extra for shipping if you ship it. Um, all the measurements will be on my blog. I don't see any score lines on here, but I'll go ahead and go through this part um, for sure. And um, like I said, I will put all the measurements on my blog. You can find that at stampwithdeb.com. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, this is cut at seven and a quarter by five and a half. And on the seven and a quarter side, I'm gonna score at one half inch and I'm going to turn this around and score it at one and a half inches. So I'm going to score it at one and one and a half on each end. It's basically what I'm going to do. Or I'm going to score it at five and three quarters. I could do that too. So five and three quarters and six and no that's not right that would not be right so this is seven and a quarter so i need to score it at one and a half from each end let's just do that and i believe that's probably one and a half there let's let me grab my scoring tool here and we'll make a nice firm line, and then a half inch would be right here. Okay, now I'm gonna turn this, the five and a half inch side, and, and it did work at five and three quarters and six and three quarters, that would have worked. Okay, so I will put those measurements on there. Um, and then I'm gonna turn it this way, and it, what, line this up at one inch, the edge of my paper at one inch, and I'm going to cut to with my blade, and I'm only gonna to cut to that first score line. So I'm just gonna to cut to that first score line there, and then I'm gonna lift my blade, and I'm gonna to cut to the first score line on the other end. Okay, I went a little bit past there, but that's okay. Now I'm gonna take my paper snips, and I am gonna cut from the second score line, which is right in here, over to that line. And this gives it the floating look, is what it basically does. I found that it, if you don't do this, it doesn't really make any difference. So if you forget to do it, don't worry about it. Um, it just gives it a little bit of a floating look from the back, but it doesn't really make a difference on the card. You could do it with it or without it. Okay, I'm gonna put that down for now. Okay, so now I'm going to fold on my score lines, 
Let me get my bone folder here. I took my toolkit away. Here's mine. And so now I'm kind of without it. Um, so it's over on the other table. And I'm just gonna burnish those lines. Okay, now you can see my first little section here. I should have put all my papers together. My first section is going to go, and so this is now at the bottom, okay? That's gonna be at the bottom. So then I've cut um, four different sizes of paper, designer series papers, and two of each, and four different um, pieces of very vanilla. I'm using very vanilla because to me, this one goes, this paper goes better with the very vanilla than it does with the basic white. Um, the other one I use the white, and so I'm real quickly going to put these together. And I really need my mat so I can see the edges, but they're okay. They're, so there's an eighth of an inch difference is all that I have. If that's hard for you to work with, make it a quarter of an inch. It won't make any difference. It's still going to look absolutely gorgeous. So, um, and I would love to see if you make this. I would love to see you post it on my Facebook page if you're not a member of my team or if you're a member of my team, post it on our, our group page, please. So let me pull these out. And like I said, this is the Daffodil um, Designer Series paper and it is a celebration paper and it is gonna go away. The end of February, this will be gone. So February 28th will be the last day that you can place a celebration order and receive an order, a $50 order and receive celebration products. So there's some really cute things this time. I love the marvelous paper. I think that would be really cute done in this. And that come, that's in so many different colors. Um, and you could use either side of this paper. It would be up to you and any of the patterns, because there are so many different pages. I try to alternate dark and light, just because to me that just makes it, gives it the, the wow factor, the pop factor that we always want. So um, that is always important to make our cards stand out. So let's get these done really quick. I know you just love watching me glue stuff together, huh? <laughs> you can fast forward through this, you know that, right? Okay, so this is the designer series paper that's like in a row that we never know what to do with. And so I just trimmed it down. And I'm gonna use that for my, my front one because it looks like my garden is growing right there, right? So I have one recommendation for you. There's another part that we are going to, um, that I've already cut and it gets scored and folded. So when you do that part, and it's the one we're gonna go to next, you wanna make sure that you don't use the extra thick, very vanilla or the extra thick white. Um, it makes it harder for the card to open up. That's all I can say. Okay, so those are all glued on there. And so we're gonna start with the first one. And so I'm gonna put adhesive, and I just wanna make sure that this is just as flat as I can make it go. I'm gonna put adhesive on this edge right here. And then I'm going to take my little panel here, and I'm going to lay it so that this corner meets and this corner meets over here. These are the two corners that I'm concerned with, the outside edges. So actually what you're doing is you're gluing it to the center section. That center section is what's getting glued down right in there. And I'm gonna do the same thing again on this side. And once again, I'm not gonna worry about what's in the middle here. I'm just gonna line this up over here on this edge. So I'm lining up the edge here with the edge of my card. I wanna make sure that's lined up and then this will automatically glue right there in the middle. So you can see now we have our gatefold, it comes together in the middle 
because these are cut at two and one eighth. So it'll, they should come right together in the middle. And then um, we're gonna just stack onto that. So next, I'm gonna do the next largest one, which is this one. And these are the panels that I recommend you cut them in, not in the extra thick, because it will make your card that much thicker, but it also makes it so that it doesn't want to um, flex as easily and bend as easily, and we want it to flex. So and then let's just, and you're gonna fold the Mountain Valley. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue those on. Now, when I'm gluing them on, and you can use any adhesive you want, but I recommend something strong, either tear and tape or the liquid glue. So this is my straight edge, this is my mountain edge. I want my straight edge to go here in the middle. And I'm not gonna go, I'm gonna go to the paper line. I was going all the way down, but I don't think I need to go all the way down, and I think that'll hide it better. So now when it folds out, this is a straight edge here that's glued down. My mountain is here and then I have my other edge. So it's almost like it's glued like that, okay? So you want it to glue so that it will stretch back because that's what's gonna happen when you open your card. Okay, so let's put the other one on the other side. So your, your rough edge, your raw edge, whatever, this edge here is always gonna go towards the center. Okay, so that one. And you want to try to make it as straight as you can. It doesn't have to be exactly centered, but if you make it as straight as you can and center it as best you can, then that's the best we can do, right? We can't do more than we ask, the best we ask for. So, um, and then I'm going to go ahead and attach this panel. And once again, I'm going to line my panel up with the outside edge. Let's put my hearts right side up. So I'm gonna line it up at the bottom and I just want to make sure that it's straight, lined up even at the bottom and even on that side. And press that in the center really good. Okay, and then I'm going to glue this one on. And I don't want to pull that yet because I want it to set really good. And lining this up on the this edge and the bottom. Bottom. <laughs> And if you get glue on it on the inside, you'll just need a glue eraser to, um, but it, see, it won't, it won't glue down it, unless you get way too much glue. So you can see what's happening here. So these are gonna open up towards the, side, towards the outside. And they will sit, you want them to sit on the, on the tabletop. So that's why you're gonna go all the way to the bottom. All right, let's keep going. So we have, the next one, which is the next largest one. And I'll just crease that. And you guys know you can rewind this and make this with me. Cut all your parts, get your measurements from my blog at Stamp with Deb, and then you can do it with me next time. Okay, so I'm gonna put my adhesive on here and attach it. This is my edge that's gonna go towards the center. Okay, and same on this one. This is where I goofed. I attached it with my folded edge one time. So I wanna make sure that this edge my fold is going back away, and this edge is going towards the center of my card. That was where I goofed. And so now that panel will not open up all the way. Okay, and then just another. We're getting there, we're almost there, guys. <laughs> okay, flowers, which way are you going? Hmm, this way. Okay, I want to make sure I match up the outside edge and the bottom.
that's the great thing about using the multi-purpose liquid glue is you do have a little bit of flex there in order to move it and adjust it if you need to. So I recommend you use the glue with this unless you're a really messy glue person. And if you have a problem, if you can see it, that's enough. You don't have to put a ton of glue on. Um, the, the rule is if you can see it, that you've got enough. So go with that. And I have something a little crooked in here, I think. I'm kind of drifting out on this corner. Okay, and my last one is this little one. And so it really takes a whole sheet of paper to create this card. This is the one I did backwards. So let's see if I can get it on right way this time. Um, a whole sheet and a little bit more. Okay, so my straight edge is here, my folded edge is on the other side. Let's just put that on like that. And straight edge goes towards the center. Okay. And my last piece here. So you almost have to create something to hold this closed, and that's where the belly band comes in. So we're going to create a belly band to go with this, to go on this card. So with your belly band, you want to make sure not to make it too tight. You want it snug so it holds your card together, but you don't want it so tight that you can't get it off and on. <laughs> so you have to be really careful with that, especially with the way that we're going to do the belly band. So isn't that gorgeous? I think it's so pretty. Okay. So I have chosen Bumblebee for my belly band since this is so close in that. It's either Calypso, um, Cal what's the name of it? Crushed Curry. It's either Crushed Curry in here or Bumblebee. I didn't look to see which one, but I thought the Bumblebee would be cute and I have a ribbon to go around it too. So when I do a belly band, I like to take and just put a little bit of adhesive in the middle. If you glue all the way down, when you go to fold your belly band, it's going to crease, it's going to crumple, it's going to look um, pretty beat up by the time you're done. You're gonna have buckles in it, is what's gonna happen. So I like to put it just in the center there. And my belly band, I want to hide where it's coming together. So I'm going to put this pretty little daffodil that I stamped from the Daffodil Daydream set right here on my belly band. So I am going to put my seam over here on this side so that it'll be hidden by that. You can hide it with a ribbon, you can hide it with anything, whatever you want. On this one, I hid it with um, the butterfly so you can't see where my belly band comes together. So, um, so I'm just gonna start over here and I'm going to wrap this around and crease it. So just wrapping it around, not pulling it super tight, but snug, because you want it snug enough that it doesn't look bad. Okay, so that's where my belly band's gonna go. So I'm gonna take it off and I'm gonna give it a little crease, folding it nice and straight, lining up the edge here. And I could even trim some of this off. This is pretty long here, so I'm gonna just trim off, what, an inch? Yep, an inch. And so then when it comes together, it won't be quite so long. Okay. Oh, that was the part I wanted to keep. Crumb. I trimmed off the wrong part. I wanted to part, trim off the underneath. Okay, we might put our 
we'll do it, we'll just do it the way we can. Okay, so I'm going to wrap this around here. And my band's gonna stay together because I glued it in the back, so it's gonna make it easier to work with. But I don't like it when I when I put it together like this and you see what happens. You can see it just doesn't look good there where the two edges are come together. So I like to do this. I like to glue these two together first. So let me put some adhesive on there. And I'm gonna glue my two bottom ones together without gluing my card in it. And do them nice and straight. So I want those two to get glued together. Okay, hold on. Okay. So they are nice and straight and it's hard to show on camera and still get them glued together. Um, there. So I have the two white ones underneath there that are getting glued together. Let's just let that set for a minute. And now I'm gonna glue these two together. And I'm gonna do those the opposite direction, even though it's gonna put it right in the center, which I didn't want. But I would rather do that because I can hide it. It won't show. I'll put a bow there. I'll put, it'll cover up. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull those up and I'm gonna glue those two together like that. So now one of my seams is over here and the other one is over here and that's perfect because then they're not gonna be as obvious that it's a big seam there. Um, let's get it together. And if I had gone further over this way, I could have taken it off, flipped it around and done that. I still possibly could. Okay, I have some ribbon. I have the um, gingham, bumblebee gingham. And I am going to wrap that around here and tie a pretty little bow. I hope it's gonna be a pretty little bow. Okay. And let's just trim that off oh, right here. And I think I need a new pair of scissors here. Mine are no longer cutting, they've been abused too much. <laughs> So I'm just gonna tie this cute little bow, sweet bow here. Now I could have put a tag, I could have put more greenery. There's a lot of things I could have done that would add to this. Um, some gems maybe, some, um, oh I know, yes, we'll use some gems. The silver and clear droplets are beautiful that we have. Oops, I can't get my bow on there. I like to put a little glue dot under my bow. Let's see, do I have my glue dot here by any chance? Yep. Okay, so we won't put a glue dot, but a lot of times I put a little glue dot underneath on the back here, just to kind of hold it in place so it doesn't slide around too much, and I'll have to trim that. Um, and so I'm gonna add my little flower over here, and I'm gonna use some dimensionals. I'm gonna grab my basket. So this is what I'm talking about. This is my table basket. I have everything in here that you can imagine. So, and I moved it off my table because I was sorting, um, putting, pa putting packets together. So um, that's why it was over there. So let's see, where do I want this? Let's put, let's get some mini dimensionals instead of the big ones. And my tweezers. And I'm just gonna actually put them on here because I wanna straddle that ribbon and it'll be easier to know where to put them. And that could actually even have another flower on it. Yes, okay, here's my scissors for my cutting ribbon. So let me just trim that off. And I have these beautiful little droplets, and I think I'll put a couple of those on. Let me see, I should have a take your pick tool in here. Oh, I should have at least one, there's usually three or four. There's one. And I'm just gonna pick that up. Now, if you have problems with the glue dots staying on the back of your gems, 
get yourself a take your pick tool because you just slide it and the, the blue dot is on there. You do not have to worry. So I'm gonna add a little water droplet right there and maybe one right here. And number three is gonna be down here. Right there. That way it looks like it's dripping on the flower. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. I will put, have all this on my blog. It's, I'm working on it now, or I will be. All the measurements, and thank you. You can find me at stampwithdeb.com.